Bill and Lloyd. I'm an emergency physician and I'm a regional medical director for Cascade Training. I'm going to go over the quick assessment of the abdomen on the mannequin for trauma. So again, I'm going to be inspecting the abdomen for any visible signs of trauma or distension. And then I'm going to palpate the abdomen gently. And really you just want to be systematic. So I'm going to gently just feel, does the abdomen feel rigid or does it feel soft? And is there any involuntary guarding? And in an unconscious patient, this is going to be a very limited exam, right? I'm just really seeing if the belly looks distended and if as I press on it, does it feel soft or does it feel rigid? And a patient who's awake and alert who can tell me about the exam, I'm simply going to be systematic and I'm going to usually start, say, in the left upper quadrant. I'm going to press fairly deeply and see if they have any tenderness. One note, when you're examining a patient who's awake, you're pressing on the belly, but you're looking at the patient's face, right? Because you want to see the patient's reaction. This is something I see the mistake people make all day, all, every day, which is they're pressing on the belly and they're looking at their hand as though there's something they're going to divine from the appearance of the, their hand going in the abdomen. Look at the patient. Does the patient grimace or anything else? And that's, I think in a nutshell, the belly exam. Now, uh, let's add the pelvis to this at the same time because just functionally this is going to be probably the same exam. I'm looking for any visible signs of trauma. Do I see a hematoma? If the patient is fully dressed, it's going to be impossible probably to inspect the genitalia or the perineum. But if the patient is undressed or maybe has a bathing suit, you probably can just look at the perineum and see is there perineal hematomas or scrotal hematoma, vulvar, genital trauma. It's good to inspect that, although I'm not going to probably completely undress the patient for that part of the exam practically in the field. We're just not really going to do that. But with the pelvis itself, I'm going to, you're not going to usually see a pelvic fracture, right? It's not going to be visible. People talk about like a deformity to the pelvis, but that's incredibly unusual. Really what you're going to do is just gently feel it. So I'm going to grab the patient kind of at the, you know, over the uh, anterior superior iliac spine and I'm just going to gently press towards the floor and I just feel is there any sense of instability and I'm going to look at the patient's face you know are they grimacing or having pain when I do that and then similarly I'm just going to compress in the same way and does the pelvis feel like it's stable or not and that's really the extension the extent of it you're not this is not massive force that you're putting down but you're putting enough so that you know, there's a little downward movement into the, towards the floor, but you're not putting all your effort and all your weight into that. You're not going to hurt the patient. And then remember, if you think there might be a pelvic fracture, just put a binder on it. You know, the reality is that we might be wrong. It might end up being, a, you know, might, it might, it might end up being another injury or no injury at all. But rarely are you going to hurt somebody. Two mistakes I see made there. One is occasionally we'll get a pelvic binder on somebody who just has a what's called an iliac wing or an ala fracture, sort of think of breaking off the side of a potato chip of the back of the pelvis. And you know, I, it's not a, not a great fracture to put a, put a binder on, but you're not really gonna hurt somebody with that. And so if you're wrong on that point, it's not a big deal. And the other thing is occasionally I'll see people put a binder on somebody with a hip fracture, and that's not great. So if you see somebody with a foreshortened internally rotated leg, and really they're not tender over the pelvis, but they're tender over the trochanter of the hip, that's more likely a hip fracture and a pelvic binder is not gonna help them. And, and it's gonna be painful for them, not gonna hurt them or probably cause adverse of that, you know, uh, anything other than just pain. But that's another thing people sometimes uh, get wrong.